Nvidia launched the GTX 1650 Super in 2019 with a very specific customer in mind. Those with a good enough power supply not to have to settle for a regular 1650, but who can't yet afford the card they really want. Those who bought this card for just that scenario probably weren't reckoning with the coming of the scalper pandemic. Or, well, the actual pandemic, either. Uh, and had to stick with their holdover card a little longer than they expected. Maybe now, in 2021, we should check in and see if they're still holding on to their sanity. The GTX 1650 Super has a special place in my heart. After an ill-advised experiment last year, in which I traded in my water-cooled RTX 2080 for an entire PC, check out the video above if you haven't already, I spent several months of 2020 languishing with nothing but the card I acquired for that build to use in my main PC. As part of the whole basis of that video, I picked up this ASUS model of the GTX 1650 Super from used tech retailer Sex for £150, paid for with store credit. This was about the going rate for a brand new card from a less premium brand like PNY, so at the time at least I didn't feel like I'd got a particularly good deal. My, how times have changed. Today I'll be retesting the card in my signature reasonably priced PC. While I'm benching a Ryzen 3 3100 with 8 gigs of DDR4 3000, you can pretty much sub in any similarly specced PC from the last few years. Running Cyberpunk 2077 at medium settings on what is essentially only slightly above the minimum requirements was a pretty lofty goal for this card and we only hit 47 FPS average and just shy of 28 FPS 1% lows. As I've established elsewhere, Apex isn't really the game for me, but I can appreciate that it runs really well considering how good it looks. 1080 at high settings still gives us an average FPS of 91 and 1% lows only very slightly below 60. In my 1050 Ti video, I mentioned I was having a hard time with Nvidia cards in Warzone. It turns out to have been Windows page file related, and although that's now sorted, I wasn't taking any chances here, so I stuck to 1080 at low settings. FPS averages were 95, and the 1% lows stuck just over 60, which made for a really smooth experience, even though the textures looked like they were courtesy of MS Paint. Forza Horizon 4 at high settings looks pretty amazing, considering it's set in England, and thanks to the 1650 Super it glides along at an average of 128 with lows of 113. I honestly really want to play this game, but in my head it's kind of become a meme that I never get around to playing it. The AC Valhalla canned benchmark at medium returns an average of 57 and lows of 43. High settings is a bit of a stretch, only coming in at 43 average and with lows dropping under 30. As one might expect from a next-gen console title, the medium isn't a game that treats graphics cards kindly. At 1080 high settings, gameplay in indoor normal sections is smooth, but 
As protagonist, Marianne frequently slips into the upside down or wherever. Frame rates absolutely tank. I saw an average FPS of 30 with lows in single digits. After establishing a little while back that Vulcan seems to give slightly better numbers than DirectX 11 in Valheim, I decided this would be my standard benchmarking procedure going forwards. Despite this, at 1080 with high settings and some fancy visuals added, I'm still only seeing averages of 52.4 and 1% lows of 34, so still some work to be done here. The closest I'm ever likely to get to a sports ball game, either on PC or IRL, Rocket League moves at a pretty fair clip on the GTX 1650 Super. With resolution once more at 1080 and high settings, the average sticks close to the 240 cap, and those 100 FPS 1% lows are not really having much impact on gameplay. By the way, scored another hat trick. Boom! Another awesome high refresh experience comes with Fortnite. At 1080 with competitive settings it's possible to reach over 200 FPS average, even in busier areas like Weeping Woods, with 1% lows grazing over 144. If you want to play on a normal TV or a conventional monitor, Epic settings average over 70 but 1% lows dip into the low 50s. You could however compromise a little on some quality settings in order to get a locked 60 or 75Hz experience. HZD as the cool kids are calling it, or okay, Horizon Zero Dawn running at original settings in 1080 plays nicely with the GTX 1650 Super, maintaining an average over 60. During combat there's the occasional frame time spike bringing 1% lows into the low 40s, but other than that this isn't far off a console original experience. If visceral visions of hell on earth aren't your thing, then you don't need to run Doom Eternal at ultra quality settings. If you do, however, the GTX 1650 Super will allow average frame rates of 110 and lows of 73. You could run at lower settings if you want a high refresh experience and don't mind missing out on some of the glorious details. Time Spy's graphics score comes in at 47.57, about 10% higher than the RX 480. The total system score comes in at 47.47, which at least in this benchmark actually makes this CPU-GPU combo almost mathematically perfect. I can heartily recommend the GTX 1650 Super to anyone looking to upgrade from an older GPU in 2021, at the retail price anyway. At today's prices, an R9290X is about 80% of the power at a fraction of the cost, so long as your PSU can handle it. If you already have this card and were wondering if it can still dance, well, it has a few stumbling blocks, mainly the really intensive games like the medium, but I don't think you need to worry about your card failing to perform at 1080 in medium and high settings in your average AAA game, or at higher frame rates in less intensive esports type games, and I think you should be pretty happy with the 1650 Super, at least until the pandemic passes. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.